Hi, I'm Doug Needham, former professor of horticulture at Oklahoma State University. It's a pleasure to have you here today to talk about orchid repotting. It's one of the most common questions I get. When should I repot? What kind of media should I use? How big a pot should it be in? All those things that you're probably wondering about the orchid that you're growing in your home. Let's take a look at some of the more common orchids that you might have in your home. Maybe you have some cattleyas. So this is a, a cattleya type orchid. And notice how it's come from the grower in Florida and it's been potted in, a, in like a gravel or a stone. Well, I don't care to grow in stone, so we're gonna look at repotting that one today. Paphiopetalum, maybe you grow some paphiopetalums. These are so well adapted to the low light environment of the home. And uh, interestingly, a paphiopetalum really prefers to be repotted about every year. And it will put out in fresh root growth when that's done. So we'll look at repotting that one, even though it hasn't been in this pot all that long. So with a paphiopetalum, it does not have pseudobulbs the way the uh, Cattleya does, and so it doesn't have a, a moisture storage organ, so it needs to stay a little bit more moist. So with that paphiopetalum, I would use a mixture of power, what's called power orchiata. So this is kind of a medium uh, grade of bark, about three-eighths to half-inch pieces. The smaller uh, coarse, number three coarse perlite, and then the fine biochar, and use that same two parts bark, one part perlite, one part of the, um, the biochar. And then with paphiopetalums, they tend to be uh, deficient on calcium, and so it's very helpful to use some oyster shells in that as well. And so just a teaspoon of fine oyster shell mixed into that, and that will provide the calcium that that plant needs. Or maybe you like to grow the dendrobiums. Dendrobiums are super popular, and this one we can see is just beginning to send out a new growth right beside this brand new growth, and look at all the new roots. That's perfect timing for repotting, and it's right at the edge of the pot, so it's time to put it in one just a little bit bigger. The dendrobium, can go just, in, you can see in this particular, the uh, grower had used a bark and perlite mix, but it would be just as happy in plain, what we call power orchiata, that medium grade bark. So we could move it into that. Probably the most common orchid grown in the home is the Phalaenopsis. And this Phalaenopsis, you can see has grown so many roots, aerial roots, because air is just as important as water to the roots of an orchid. They are epiphytes, meaning that they typically grow attached to trees and they just uh, get moisture from the fog that goes through or the rain, but they're always exposed to ample air. This one's growing in a plastic pot, but because it's so large, it topples over. So I keep it in a sitting in a clay pot just so it doesn't fall over. So it's time to move that up to a more stable pot even though it's in full bloom. And then this Phalaenopsis came from the grower in sphagnum moss. So many commercial growers grow Phalaenopsis in long fiber sphagnum moss. We could certainly repot it into fresh sphagnum moss, or you could move it into just that same power orchiata, that nice medium grade bark. All right, well, let's pot up one of these orchids. Let's start with this Cattleya here. And one of the things that is absolutely imperative to, to recall is that viruses are a problem in orchids. And a plant can have a virus and you may not know it. So it's really important to wear gloves, put on a fresh pair of gloves with each plant that you're gonna work on, and then make sure that the, the surface the work surface is clean. So the, this uh, head house that I work in, the countertops are all stainless steel. So we wanna clean that surface, the countertop, 
just with a, a disinfecting wipe. Wipe that down really well, and then your pruning shears. You need to clean those as well. So that same wipe you can use to clean off the pruning shear. If you happen to have a little torch, a little butane torch, you can even use that to flame off the pruning shear that kills the viruses. And then, of course, my mnemonic vise, close it, and you know it's ready to go for the next use. So let's clear some of these things out of the way here and take a look here at this orchid. So we're going to get that label out. We want to keep track of the label because that's what tells us the name of that orchid. And then literally just going to pour out this media. So we'll get that right into the bucket. Gently get all that rocky media off. Now we can see better the root system of this plant. And of course, it's really a perfect time because look at these nice green tips. That's the roots in active growth and you can see fresh ones emerging right there. But notice here at the very back, this is the oldest part of the plant. And you can see that these roots are pretty brown and the core is just stripping away the, the vellum from the outside. So what I would recommend is literally remove that oldest part and let's kind of move, go back to about where those new or where the white roots are and we're going to cut right through the rhizome and look at there, see there's no roots left on that part. So we'll put that into compost and here's a little bit more that we need to trim out. And at that point, I think this plant is now ready to be repotted. One last thing that I tend to do before repotting is these old uh, pseudobulb coverings here, this papery covering. Peel that off. <clears throat> it, um, it provides a, a place for insects to hide. So you can just grab a hold of that and just gently peel it down, peel that off and get rid of it. And that way then there's not a hiding spot. There's a particular scale insect that really loves to get down under those and hide. And that way you're not at risk of having those. Well, that's ready to be repotted. And one of the questions I'm often asked is, well, what potting mix do you use? There are so many different potting mixes available for growing orchids. And there's really no one magic mix. You can use whatever is easiest for you. So if it's easier to go to your local garden center and buy a pre-mixed orchid mix, that'll work just great. But if you've got several orchids and you want to be able to mix up your own, you can do that as well. And that's all there is to it. So as I said, there's no magic mix. It's just whatever works well in your environment and how frequently that you tend to be watering your orchids. If you'd like to know more information about growing orchids, the American Orchid Society, AOS.org, is an excellent resource. And I encourage all of you to reach out to your local AOS affiliate orchid society and become a member. In Oklahoma, we have two. There's one based in Tulsa, the Tulsa Orchid Society, which has a Facebook page. And in uh, the Oklahoma City, there is the Oklahoma Orchid Society. And it has a full website with all kinds of helpful resource information. So we encourage you to learn more about orchids and come to a meeting and, and really engage with people that are passionate about sharing their love of growing orchids. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.